the GH5S is a new addition to the Lumix flagship lineup that now includes three cameras. The G9 which aims at sports and wildlife photographers, the GH5 which offers the best of both worlds for high-risk shooters, and the GH5S which is especially designed for filmmakers. The GH5S has a completely new sensor with an effective pixel count of 10.2 megapixel. It uses the multi-aspect ratio technology that the brand has employed on other cameras before. The sensor is slightly larger than the area covered by the lens, which means that the effective sensor surface used is always cropped. This gives you the advantage of keeping the same diagonal angle of view no matter which aspect ratio you select. The 10 megapixel resolution is rather low by today's standards, but the aim, like with the A7S range for Sony, is to improve the low light capabilities. The GH5S can record with a range of 160 to 51,200 ISO. There are also extended values that go as high as 204,800 ISO. Panasonic showed us a brief video comparison with the regular GH5, where better contrast and less color noise at 6400 and 12800 ISO were noticeable. Even with our own brief ISO test we performed in the press room, you can see that the performance seems very promising for a Micro Four Thirds camera. So how did Panasonic manage to improve this? Well, first the lower megapixel count allows each pixel to be larger and receive more light. Then there is the dual native ISO technology which was first introduced on the Varicam 45 and EVA01 camcorders earlier on. But what exactly does dual native ISO mean? First, let's talk about the ISO range of digital sensors. We have the normal range, which can also be called amplified range, that requires a variation in voltage to achieve more or less sensitivity. Many cameras also have extended ISO settings which are produced via software algorithm. But there is a third value that is often not mentioned in the official spec sheet of a camera, and that's the native ISO. Native ISO is the native sensitivity of the sensor that doesn't require a variation in voltage, thus giving you the best signal to noise ratio and the widest dynamic range possible. You can get a hint of this when selecting a log gamma profile. In the case of the GH5, the minimum ISO available for Vlog L is 400, which is the native sensitivity of the camera. Everything above ISO 400 is amplified by an increased voltage to the sensor, which gradually produces more noise. With dual ISO, however, the GH5S has two native ISO sensitivities, ISO 400 and ISO 2500. So when you want to shoot at 3200 or 6400 ISO, for example, the camera uses the second native value as a base and therefore doesn't need to amplify the gain as much as it would from ISO 400. The GH5S has better ISO performance, but what about other video characteristics? Well, just like its twin sister the GH5, it can record in 4K up to 50 or 60 frames per second or 4K up to 30p in 422 10-bit and up to 400 megabit per second. Other interesting features include hybrid log gamma and like 709 profiles, knee control, hue adjustments, waveform monitor, vector scope, luminance levels, and many other things. There is also a full-size HDMI port, audio in and out, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth. Like the GH5, video recording is unlimited thanks to the efficient power management of the Venus engine and the heat dissipation of the camera. It can also record simultaneously to the two SD card slots, or record internally and to an external recorder at the same time. The S model has kept a few extra features for itself. It can record in cinema 4K up to 60p rather than just 24p, and the highest frame rate in Full HD is 240 frames per second rather than 180 frames per second. The Vlog L gamma is pre-installed and the audio input can be used for a microphone or as a line-in for other audio sources. It has a time code in and out to synchronize with other GH5S cameras or professional camcorders. For the latter, you use the flash sync port and Panasonic includes a coaxial cable in the box. The GH5S does lack a few things in comparison to the GH5. Given the low resolution, there are no 6K capabilities such as 6K photo or anamorphic 6K recording. It can still do 4K photo up to 60 frames per second and the anamorphic format is available in 4K and can even be de-squeezed in camera. 
An important feature missing from the GH5S is 5-axis in-body stabilization. This also means there's no compatibility with Dual AS, so it can only rely on the optical stabilization of select lenses. Panasonic explained that professional productions prefer other kinds of stabilization systems rather than relying on something internal. Also, having the sense of floating inside the camera can cause unwanted vibrations when recording certain kinds of footage, such as camera car shots. With all this information for video out of the way, you may wonder if the GH5S has anything to offer for still photographers at all. Well, in a way, yes, because it's the first micro for thoughts camera to have 14-bit RAW, which gives you more color information. That said, I feel that this particular specification would be more welcome on the GH5 and G9 models. The camera can shoot up to 11 frames per second or 7 frames per second with continuous autofocus. The shutter mechanism is rated at 200,000 cycles. The AF system is similar to the one found on the GH5, that from the focus contrast detection with 225 points and the custom AF settings. The AF locking speed is slower, but the minimum sensitivity is higher. The design will be identical to the GH5 if not for the distinctive red recording button and the red ring on the drive dial. It is made of magnesium alloy and is fully weather sealed. The size is the same as the GH5, which means that many accessories will fit both cameras including third-party cages and battery grips. Other characteristics such as the viewfinder and the LCD screen are the same as the GH5. Finally, the GH5S is more expensive than its sibling. It should be available by the end of January 2018.